Are there other programs like you? Oh, well, not like me, but... Look, see those birds? At some point, a program was written to govern them. A program was written to watch over the trees and the wind, sunrise and sunset. There are programs running all over the place. <laughs> It was a period which witnessed an enormous blossoming of various secret doctrines and orders. Templars and Rosicrucians, Illuminati and Freemasons, Anthroposophists, Theosophists, Neo-Templars and Armanan. Some of them seemed suddenly to have woken up after a centuries-long sleep. What had disturbed their slumber was this. The impending arrival of the prophesied New Age. The changeover from the Age of Pisces to the Aquarian Age. Every one of these groups felt themselves called upon to make their mark on the approaching era. The year 1917. Four men and a woman met here in the Viennese Café Schopenhauer. The young Maria Ortisch, a spiritualistic medium from Zagreb. The student and fighter pilot Lothar Weitz. The occultist, orientalist and officer Karl Haushofer. Rudolf von Sebottendorf, an occultist who had recently returned from the Orient. As well as Prelate Gernot from the Order of Knights Templar. Their subject was the coming of the New Age. They spoke of secret revelations, the Spear of Destiny, the magical violet black stone. They discussed the possibility of making transmedial contact with the ancient Germanic and Babylonian deities, Ishtar Ostara and Isais, and of communicating with distant worlds, not only on this side, but also on the other. It is quite likely that this coffeehouse meeting witnessed the birth of the secret Thule Society, which in turn later spawned the German National Socialist Party, the SS, Black Sun and the Friel Society, which in its turn gave a foundation to the occult activities of the Third Reich and the new comprehensive technology. And the beginning of German UFOs. Maria Ortisch presented texts she had received from her spirit medium one in the Sumerian alphabet and the other in the secret code of the Knights Templar. Both texts had already been translated. Were they messages from the gods or tidings from some alien civilization? Two special departments, U-13 and SSE-4, were set up to concentrate exclusively on the realization of this new technology. After the National Socialist Party came to power, the occult societies withdrew into the background. Within the SS, the Tula Society created a separate secret organization called the Black Sun. The Friel Society carried on much as before with its scientific research. According to reports, the Friel Society had by the middle of 1934 created its first experimental circular aircraft to be propelled with the anti-gravitational effect, the RFC-1. The men responsible for the design and construction were Dr. Schumann, and an engineer from Bochum. Since 1929, the young Gatti Vogt had been responsible for running the Real Society. She made herself known to private investors who were prepared to invest in projects that carried an element of risk. Before the end of 1934, the Real Society had built its first light aircraft. The RFC-2 round aircraft. It was fitted with an improved real propulsion system and, for the first time, magnetic impulse steering. It measured hardly more than 16 feet from end to end, but it worked. It already possessed two typical characteristics of UFOs. The optical blurring of the contours when accelerating and the colored lights depending on the level of 